Ah, the good old Linux packaging format wars. We had devs and RPMs and other esoteric things, and more recently we added flat packs, snaps, and app images to the mix. And now all we have is a big bag of confusion, different feature sets, advantages, drawbacks, and limitations. But apart from ideological preferences, and from personal preferences, I think it's interesting to look at the performance of each format and what's actually missing still from each format. So today we'll dive into exactly that. We'll look at performance differences between various packaging formats, but also what's missing from each of them and the major differences. And we'll also look at this segue from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Proton VPN. You probably already know about Proton Mail, one of the most secure and private email services out there, but they also have their VPN service, which is equally as secure and private. It's also based in Switzerland and it doesn't log any activity and it doesn't share any data with third parties. Of course, it is fully encrypted, so you can use it from any public Wi-Fi or at home to either change your location or just stay anonymous online. On top of that, Proton VPN uses a 10 gigs per second network plus a suite of VPN accelerators. So even when you're using it, your browsing stays really fast. Proton VPN supports all your devices, PC or mobile, and they can even run on routers. And they've just completely rebuilt their Linux desktop client for it as well. Complete with advanced features like a DNS filter to block ads and trackers, a kill switch to stop your internet connection if the VPN connection drops so your IP is never exposed, plus Secure Core, which provides a double VPN to provide a server located in a country where strong privacy laws apply. I don't usually recommend VPN services, but Proton VPN is my pick of choice. And you can use it for free by clicking the link in the description below, or they also have paid plans for more features and even more security. So yeah, click the link in the description to get started with Proton VPN. Okay, so first let's start with a very quick recap of what each packaging format actually is and does. So what we call packages are what most distros use these days. The most well-known are Debs for Debian and Ubuntu-based distros and RPMs for Red Hat and SUSE-based distros. But you also have Arch packages, Nix packages and a bunch of others. Apart from Nix, they're generally not compatible between distros, they don't implement any specific sandboxing or security model and they are distributed through repositories, whether official or third party. These packages can contain libraries or apps, and all libraries are shared between applications, which saves space, but also means an app that needs a newer library might not be able to work on an older distro. Then we have flat packs, which are what most distros generally add on top of their regular packages. They are distro agnostic, so if your distro supports flat pack, it can run the exact same package as any other distro. The developer packages their app once and it runs on everything. No need to duplicate packaging work. Flat packs are sandboxed, which means they offer less security holes for potential attackers. And while they share a lot of libraries through runtimes, which are flat packs that contain a lot of libraries that many apps rely upon, they can also ship their own libraries in the package, which means they can use more space over time. Flatpaks are mostly distributed through Flathub, an online repo, but you can also create your own repo since everything is open source. Snaps are basically the exact same concept as Flatpaks, but for Ubuntu. There are a few technical differences with Flatpaks, especially regarding how apps are opened and mounted onto the system, but they work in the same way. You have runtimes that ship libraries needed by multiple apps, and then applications that can use these runtimes. Snaps can be sandboxed, but it's not mandatory, so some aren't, and they're distributed exclusively through the Snap Store run by Canonical, and that specific backend is not open source. Snaps are packaged once, and the same snap can be used by any distro, provided it supports the format. Another big difference is that snaps are suitable not only for graphical apps, but also for command line programs, server-side applications, or even the kernel, a desktop environment, a bootloader, or drivers. Finally, app images are a more portable format, similar to what macOS does. The whole app is shipped inside a single file, with most, if not all, of its libraries. 
This means you can copy paste apps from a system to another and they run on any distro that has access to Fuse, which is what app images use to run. App images are not sandboxed at all, although you can do that manually with something like FireJail. And they sometimes rely on system libraries that your distro ships as regular packages, which means certain app images might not work on certain systems that don't have the required library. They are generally distributed from the developer's website or from App Image Hub. App images don't automatically create entries in your system menu unless you use a specific daemon that runs in the background. Now that's about it for the basics of each format. They're all suitable to run applications and generally you can use whichever one you prefer or whichever one works best for you. But there are performance differences. So let's look at that. So I ran all these tests on the same Ubuntu 23.04 virtual machine with all updates applied, installing apps in all packaging formats. The VM has access to 16 gigs of RAM, four cores of my 13th gen i7-13700H using software rendering. Now, obviously, this is not meant to represent real hardware. It's just meant to have a single comparison point between various formats that you can use to run your applications. So I installed Firefox, LibreOffice, and GIMP using all four packaging formats I mentioned previously, all using the very latest version of each app, and I measured the time it took for their first opening and subsequent runs. So judging from these results, we can clearly see a few things. First, all packaging formats other than regular packages take longer to start than basic dev packages. It's especially visible with heavy apps that need to do some setup when they first open, like LibreOffice or GIMP. You can double the time it takes for the first open of an app. But we also notice that on subsequent openings of an application, all packaging formats are really, really close. Apart from the snap of LibreOffice, they are all either faster, equally as fast, or really, really close to the deb package. This also highlights a specific issue with snaps. Optimizations can be applied per package and not to the whole packaging format. Now let's see in-app performance with some benchmarks inside Firefox. I ran the speedometer test in all four versions of Firefox and also the Jetstream benchmark. So here are all the results and bigger numbers are better. So from these benchmarks, we can see that there are some counterintuitive results. The snap performs worse for Jetstream, but much better for speedometer, while Flatpak performs on par for speedometer, but worse for Jetstream. Dev packages perform well for Jetstream, but worse for speedometer, and the app image is generally just a good performer. I'm not sure what's happening here. I could reproduce these differences reliably by running the benchmarks multiple times. I guess the underperformance of sandboxed formats for Jetstream comes from the fact they have to request access to certain resources through the sandbox, which might slow them down periodically, but I am not certain. Also, do remember that these numbers are probably way lower than what you would get on real hardware. They're just meant to provide a comparison point by running everything on the same system. Now, in conclusion, on benchmarks, sandboxed formats like Flatpaks and Snaps will generally take a bit longer to open an app on a cold boot, but they perform normally afterwards, and they'll generally be a bit less speedy in certain tasks, at least while web browsing. It is not necessarily noticeable in day-to-day -day use, but the difference is there and needs to be mentioned. Now, let's look at some other issues. First is the sandbox. A sandboxed application runs in its own environment with very few ways to access things outside of that sandbox. This is similar to how web browsers run each tab in a separate process that can't access the main browser thread or the other tabs. Regular packages are not sandboxed by default. They install in the file system. They require root privileges to install, which means that if the package has some malicious post-install scripts that it runs, you have given it free reign over your system and any app you install through packages can access anything your user can. Your entire slash home directory, for example, or other app settings files. Basically, it means that you should only install these packages from sources you trust, either your distro's repos or well-vetted third-party repos. And you also have to believe that all those packages in these official sources have been well-tested, well-audited, and haven't been modified to add anything malicious. 
As per flat packs, they are all sandboxed. The sandbox isn't 100% bulletproof, nothing is, but it does limit what the app can access. This is all managed through app permissions, much like what you would find in Android or iOS apps. You can give apps permissions to access specific files and folders or specific system services and components. This is all generally handled through desktop portals, which means the app doesn't really access the file or the folder, it opens a portal, which is what accesses the required resource and passes it to the application. This is obviously much more secure than regular packages, but it also limits what the app can actually access or do, and it does force you to interact with permissions if the package hasn't set the correct permissions. We'll see what's missing in a minute. Now, snaps can be sandboxed, but the sandbox is not mandatory. Developers can decide to not use it, although this triggers a manual review of the snap app when it's uploaded to the snap store to check if it does anything weird. The sandbox is heavily linked to app armor profiles, which are Ubuntu's way of securing applications and restricting or monitoring what they can access and what they can share with other applications. If they are sandboxed, snaps can be just as secure as flat packs and are more secure than regular dev packages. And if you know how app armor works, then it's also very easy to manage everything that they can do and to restrict what they can do. As per app images, they do not have a sandbox natively, so they are just as insecure as regular packages. Like regular packages, you can sandbox them using something like FireJail, but it will be a manual operation for every application. Now, let's see what's missing in terms of features for each format. Regular packages can access everything, so there is no missing feature here. They are the baseline. They can talk with other apps, they can access the system theme, they can do screen sharing, they can access any file your user can access. There's nothing to mention here. Flatpaks and snaps have more restrictions. The main missing piece is native messaging support. This is what lets an app communicate with another. And one main use case is for password managers and web browsers and sometimes VPN apps. You can force it by poking holes in the sandbox, but it destroys the security model of these packaging formats, so it's definitely not recommended. Native messaging has been implemented in the Snap package for Firefox, but it still has issues with certain password managers. App images don't have any issues with this as they are not sandboxed. Now this is the biggest hole that has yet to be plugged, and it does mean that these packaging formats, snaps and flat packs, can be unsuitable for certain use cases. Now support for the system theme is also not perfect for snaps and flat packs, or for app images. For flat packs and snaps, if your current theme is available as a snap or a flat pack, it will be downloaded automatically and applied to the app provided the app itself can follow that theme. So for example, LibAdvita apps will not use it. If your chosen theme is not available in the Flatpak remote or the Snap Store though, the app will use the default theme for the toolkit it uses. So Breeze or Advita. For Flatpaks, you can force theming by giving permissions to the app itself to access your config files, but for snaps, you will have to use an environment variable, which might definitely break things. App images might follow your system theme or they might not, depending on how the app has been packaged and if the app forces the use of a theme it bundles. Generally, if you want the best system integration with your theme, with your global menu and stuff like that, regular packages are the way to go. Flat packs can be coerced into using your theme, but they do require some manual work. As per other various problems with these packaging formats, you also have the size of packages. While snaps and flat packs do share libraries between apps, they don't share as much as regular packages, which means they can take up more space, especially if you use them to mix and match apps from different toolkits or apps that use different versions of GNOME or of the KDE platforms, because you will download plenty of runtimes for different versions of GNOME and different versions of KDE, and those do take up some space. App images tend to be pretty large as well because they do not share anything between applications, so each app has the entire set of the toolkit and the platform that it might need, or it will rely on the one your system has, but in that case, it's not truly portable. Snaps also have the added problem that they mount each app in its own virtual file system that is decompressed on the fly. This generally results in slower startup times for snap apps 
and can clutter your mount points, which can be annoying if you need to manage these regularly. The Snap Store backend is also proprietary and it is centralized, which is something that isn't generally viewed as coherent with the ethos of open source and Linux in general. Now, these are the major pain points and limitations with these packaging formats in terms of features, what they can do and what they can access. Now, there might be other smaller problems, but these are the main ones. But do remember, this is all software. These problems can and probably all will be fixed in time. In the end, the differences are pretty minor and all these packaging formats will give you a very similar experience. Unless you really want easy theming of your system, or you need to use something like a third-party password manager, in which case regular good old packages might be your best bet. But my general advice is use whatever your distro provides. They will generally result in the exact same experience, and if something doesn't work, try another packaging format. I do hope that in the future we'll be able to settle on a unified single packaging format for graphical applications. My bet would be on Flatpak because, well, snaps are mostly maintained by Canonical themselves and if they ever decide they don't want to spend the time on this format anymore, this thing is dead. App images are still just not as well distributed or integrated and while they have their use, I feel like they're the least interesting option of the more recent three formats. And regular packages will probably always have their place, at least for all the underlying system. Time will tell if we're moving towards more unification, where a packaging format really dominates the graphical app scene, or if someone will invent something entirely new. It's all pretty confusing for beginners. Advanced users will know what they prefer, they will know the differences, and they will know how to install whatever they want. But for beginners, I am pretty sure that it would be way better for the general Linux adoption if we could settle on a single packaging format, at least for graphical applications. And I think it's better if we settle on this segue to our sponsor. Tuxedo makes laptops and desktops that ship with Linux out of the box. All the hardware they use has been picked specifically because it runs really well with Linux. And if they detect any quirks or problems during their testing, they actually submit patches upstream so the problem can be fixed for everyone else. Now, Tuxedo has a big range of devices that should fit every price point and every need, whether you need a laptop, a NUC, a workstation, something for gaming, they have it all. All the devices are very customizable in terms of the components, the performance you want, but also the keyboard layout or your own logo on the lid of your laptop. You can really pick whatever you want. And the laptops can all be opened, repaired, and upgraded, including the RAM, the SSD, the battery, and sometimes even the wireless card. So if you need a new computer and you want to run Linux on it and you want to support Linux's development, click the link in the description below and get yourself a PC from Tuxedo. They're really good. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like the video, you can always dislike it and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you really enjoy the channel and you want to support it, there are plenty of links in the description to do just that. From LibraPay, Patreon, YouTube memberships, PayPal, whatever, you know how this works. So thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!